Hi everyone, welcome to week two of the course. Sorry I'm going to be moving around, but I don't know how to use my webcam and look at the screen as well. So when I go over the quiz, I'm going to have to reference another computer to make a little bit easier transition. So for this week, all you have to complete is quiz covering chapters three and four. Now, for this week, in Chapter 3, we're going to look at depository institutions, which are banks, savings and loans, credit unions. They accept many different types of deposits. Now, a depository institution seeks to earn positive spread between assets it invests and the cost of its funds. In generating that spread, that's really where the profit will exist. Now, all national banks must be members of the Federal Reserve System. And I used to work for the Fed, and that was a very big challenge, because we're always looking at all these banks and what are their different things that they have to evaluate. And one of the big challenges that banks were facing is the sources of funding with the banks. And there are three main sources of funding with banks. Deposits, non-deposit borrowing, and retained earnings. So all of these components had some type of ability to raise funds for the bank. You'll notice that a lot of banks face a lot of challenges right, right now to uh, earn cash or to bring in cash, but it'll be interesting to evaluate. Now, banks must maintain reserves at one of the 12 Federal Reserve Banks. So they were divided into 12 districts, but they have to maintain one of those. The key is maintain it one of those to make decisions. Now, for this week, please note that it ends on Saturday, the week. So given that it ends on Saturday, you have until now, until Saturday night at 11 o'clock, to complete 10 questions, 40 minutes. And the questions are only going to be over basically chapters 1 through 4, but more on 3 and 4. So some of the questions that you're going to look at, and I'm going to have to look over at this screen while we do it. The Fed provides what to banks as it requires them to hold? And what does it require the deposits of a bank? So basically the question is looking at the difference between a loan and the reserve. The next question is looking at the ratio of the money supply in the economy's income. So what is that? Next question is looking at a credit union and their assets. What does that consist of? Next question is looking at global banking activities. What do they generate? Global banking activities. They generate two things. Now, the process of creating a money supply is looked at of, as, as, with what type of term? Now, the role of, oh, well, I would like you to review repository institutions, depository institution, and now accounts. And what are the purpose of those different institutions? Question seven, you want to look at a couple different acts. The National Bank Act in 1863, the Office of the Controller, Controller of the Currency Act, Federal Reserve Act of 1913, that's when the Fed was started, and the Financial Institutional Reforms Recovery and Enforcement Act of 1989 to answer the question. Question eight is looking at the three sources of funds for banks, which is something we covered today. Question 9 is looking at the United States and what do they have to hold in terms of a bank has to hold a certain amount at the bank. What is that called? And the last question is looking at the level of interest rate. How does it affect the money multiplier and the required reserve ratio? Does it affect it negatively or positively? If you have any questions on those, please let me know. But please note that no late work is accepted. 
So the week will end on Saturday. So by Saturday, you need to make sure to have all the quiz taken. There's no discussion board this week. And then on week three, we'll start on Sunday. So I look forward to your efforts.